So I guess we should start the meeting if everybody is ready. Uh, tonight is the, um, what is tonight? It is May 19th, 2020. And this is the Bristol Planning Commission meeting. And we will begin. Uh, we are going to review, continue reviewing the site, uh, the unified development. No, Chris. It's not a unified, oh, it's unified development regulations. It's not a unified planning document. Is that interchangeable? I thought that was it's, interchangeable. It's semantics. It, it, okay. Whatever you want whatever. to name so it. So I'll, I'll say one sometimes and the other other times. So unified um, development regulations. Uh, we had talked about specifically looking at section two, uh, which is the uh, looking at the different um, zones and their uh, dimensional standards, um, et cetera. Um, and we are also going to, I sent out uh, to everybody a list that Chris had put together of some um, different zoning uh, changes or updates that, that um, he feels should be made. And uh, looking over them, I agree with you on most of them, but we need to discuss that. Um, just so those were things that kind of, we didn't realize weren't working when we updated the zoning regs. So okay. there are things that have Chris has discovered along the way. That yeah, they're, they're, and most of them are, are, I won't say trivial, they're, they're pretty basic. It was things that got, as we rewrote these from the top to bottom, they just either got overlooked or they just weren't thought through at the level maybe we should have. Mm -hmm. And, but they have caused some problems too. So it's yeah. important that we get them squared away. So uh, I, I have not been able to read over your comments, Kevin. Um, you said your, your head was about to pop when you uh, were done reading that. I didn't know if that meant you had a lot of comments because <laughs> I sort of assumed that it did. Um, but maybe we should go over Chris's list first, but I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here. Um, do we have any minutes to approve? Yeah, I think we have two weeks or two sessions to approve. They were all sent out. I uh, okay. three weeks worth, and I think Bill sent all three weeks out to everyone. Three weeks, okay. Was everybody able to look at those and have any comments on those? Uh, let's start with, uh, I think the first one is four, it was 421.20. Actually, I had, I think 421.20. I have 421.20 and 521.20 on my list. What, do you know what the other one was, Bill? I think there was one in March. Okay. Well, if it's 521, we're looking into the future. Oh, really? 5-5. <laughs> <laughs> five, five. I think there was a March and an April. <clears throat> okay. Well, did anyone have any uh, uh, comments or any changes so, to the minutes? So on 5-6, Bill sent out the following minutes. Meeting of 5-5, five, five, 421, and 3-3. Three, three. There you go. That's okay. right. Yep. Because I asked him to. Thank you, Bill. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and um, okay, so was everybody able to read those? And and do we, are you okay with them? Do you can anyone make a motion? I make a motion to accept all of them. Yes. Second. Any discussion? Do, do we have a second first? You yeah. second. So Tom seconded. Um, do we have any discussion on that? Nope. Okay. Um, then the minutes are approved. If, if everybody uh, agrees. I approve. Favor? Okay. So the minutes of 3320, 421, 20, and 5520 are approved. Great. So is there anything else anyone wants to talk about under administrative matters about how much you love Zoom? 
maybe. <laughs> um, no. Anything else? No? Nope. Hearing none? Okay. Uh, let's then get into the zoning updates that Chris has put together for us. Chris, do you want to just go through them one at a time and explain where they are in the document or just note where they are and the problem and why you are ma making this? Sure. Yes. You Katie, <clears throat> Katie, can you scroll through the document to get to the right page that uh, Chris I, I will if he gives me a page number. Ah, okay, great. That'd be super. Um, Katie, let's just go to the uh, use table to start with, and that's probably a good start point. Okay, can you give me a page number? Right near the front. Um, it's all yellow. No, yeah. no, go back. Right, up, right there. Whoop, right there. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you scroll down one page, Katie, to uh, page two of this, to mm -hmm. right there, that's good. So under industrial uses, one of the things that I've run into quite a bit are people wanting to do some of these uses outside of just the commercial zone. Um, Village Mix is another one that's come up. I didn't have that on the list. I forgot that that was another one that, um, and the big one has been, um, Business yards. So a business yard is anything that's not producing product. So a landscaper, an excavator, they want to have their shop. They want to be able to build a building, service their vehicles, um, and run their business out of, out of a piece of property. This really has come up. I've got three um, in the village proper that have talked to me. They would love to move out of the village. Um, Two of them are very visible. One is Masterson and one is a Butler and the other's a little bit smaller, but there's no land available down in the commercial district that's, a, that's cost effective. Tommy Lathrop owns basically all the land that's available in the commercial zone that's developable. He sold off about two thirds of it so far. There's not a lot of land left. After that, we were really running out of developable land for commercial. So when we look at it, if you look at the, the, the zoning maps, that at a minimum, RA5 and the village mix, village mix is sort of a hodgepodge of industrial and residential uses. And RA5 is, is a lot of the, uh, the Route 116 corridor, both north and south. And those are spots that it sort of kind of makes sense that if you're gonna expand that option out and give folks an option, that those would be an ideal place to do it. Um, I really think they need to be conditional um, uses so that there can be things set, A, to make sure that it's compatible with the neighbors. That's the number one thing that a conditional use does. And second, it allows whichever uh, the, the, DR, the upcoming DRV, hopefully, to review things like hours of operation, noise, lighting, things like that. So expanding that use out a little bit, um, south, business yards, um, I've had one person talk to me about a self storage yard down in South 116. Um, those are really the two biggies that, that seem to be semi compatible with those areas. If you look at them, it's sort of the, the logical spot where you might want to have the, the landscaper move his landscaper trailers and put up a small uh, garage to service his equipment instead of doing it on the corner of Mountain Street. So that's just, that's the first bullet point. Chris, are all of those, do we not have business yard in any RA zone? No, the only place it's allowed is in C1. Okay. So again, I think that was an oversight when we did these. Because, we, because what happens if, if you look at the previous regs, they weren't allowed then either. And, I, and we, it was, I think it was one of those when we got to this section, it was like, if it wasn't there before, we ain't changing it. So that was, yeah, that was one of our um, mottos or. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is uh, what it is. But again, business yard and self storage is one of, another one that I had a couple of people look at. Um, that when you look at the other things we allow, like the RA5, we allow like a repair shop or a service station. So 
having um, Greg Butler move his landscape business down to South 116 it doesn't seem like it's incompatible with other things that we think work there. Right. Yeah, yeah. especially if we have it as a conditional review. Absolutely. I think conditional, and, and again, so I, I would be, if, if, we, if you would look at RA5 and Village Mix, um, because the other spot with Village Mix is things like, I look at the business park that, that, um, that Kevin Harper's still working on over on, or even existing Bristol Works, if a, um, if like Smith McLean's moving their business down to South 116, they already went through the whole process to do that. But if they had wanted to move into one of the business parks, technically you can't move your construction business or your excavating business. Now, again, from, from a conditional use, you could limit things like equipment in the yard and things like that, but they can't even build a shop to repair their own stuff in those spots, which is sort of possibly one of the a logical tenant in a business park. Kevin? So I, I, I'm singing, I'm going to sing the same song with these RA districts as well as um, a lot of the other districts. And I struggled quite a bit trying to understand why there were certain uses of allowed in certain districts and not in, in others. The RA districts is very inconsistent on what's allowed and what isn't. And a lot of my notes um, were comments trying to rectify or understand why something was allowed in one distance. For, for instance, the one that really, I just can't believe it's there is you can put a, a, um, a town shed on Main Street, you know? So there's there's a lot of fodder with with these uses and what's allowed in each one of these districts. So Chris, do you want to give a little more history <laughs> on? So I I joined the planning commission. I don't know, 2014 maybe, and we were sort of just starting, kind of sort of just starting this. Uh, it had been. Um, it had been it had been discussed previous and previously and there was a lot of um compromising would you say and negotiating so there was a lot of that and i, I don't know chris was much more involved with it than i was um i was a new member at the time so some of it is maybe okay what the heck? <laughs> I didn't yeah. say that. Um, but that's not necessarily right. Um, so I don't know. I can't really. Um, so, Kevin, that. what are the, your specific uh, problems with it? I mean, specifically. Uh, I, I, I know it, it would take, it would take a while to go through them all. Which if you want to do it now or wait until we get through Chris's stuff. Yeah. In, in either way, it's fine. Um, I, I think we, a lot of your points you made, Kevin, um, as far as some of the inconsistencies are, are actually very valid. Um, and so as Katie said, a little bit of the history, <coughs> excuse me. Um, when we did this sort of, as I said earlier, one of the mantras that we seem to go by, which, I, I, it, it is what it is, was if that's what it said before, you, somebody had to make a compelling case to change it. So there wasn't a lot of innovation or heavy thinking on a lot of this stuff. It was, oh, we've always allowed town sheds on, on Main Street. And the reason was because at one point in time, there was a building on Main Street that was owned by the town. They might use it for this. So there's a lot of historical ick for the last lack of better term, that is sitting in, in these use tables. Um, as I went through your, your comments, Kevin, I, I, the, the, a lot of those were discussions that were had that near the end, people were pretty beat up on this. We're like, you know what? If it was there before, just do it. We're, we're just gonna move on, we don't have time. So I, I think it very much warrants, if somebody goes through this and looks at it and says, 
why in God's name are we allowing a, a public works facility in the downtown? It's a good question. Maybe it shouldn't be there anymore. We don't have room for it in the downtown. And it would make more sense if we were going to off option it. Heck, move it out to the RA5, out to the more rural districts. That's more where you would want, possibly see a town shed. So I don't know. Hopefully that helps a little bit of where the document came from. Um, and I personally believe right now is as the planning commission, you all have the opportunity to look at these inconsistencies, rationalize them or not, and make some modifications where it makes sense uh, to you all. Because you've got a golden opportunity here to really look at these and go, I don't get that. And maybe there's a, there, there may be the one offset um, that a club is allowed out in RA5 for some reason. I don't remember why, but there's, there might be some history behind it that we could come up with. Um, but for the most part, I think everything should be on the table. If somebody sees an issue, you should present it. And let's, I would make changes. But that's my two cents on that one. Um, again, my, my initial list, the biggest one I run into are the commercial uses out in the RA districts. Again, RA1, the, the real, that real drag of, or that real chunk of it, the predominant space of that is down along um, South 116 from about the store to Notch Road. Um, then you got RA2 scattered throughout there. And then RA5 is the big one. Those are big, long expanses of some current um, large parcels that could either be chopped up for a residential or somebody may want to buy them and do a, a combination of part of it they're going to do their commercial, part of it they're going to do residential. Um, it's, it, there are other parts. There's, some of it's up in the notch, some of it's out up in Meehan. So it, it is all over the place, but where I keep getting pushback is for these companies, for these businesses to move out of the village where they don't belong. I mean, when you think about it, Josh Masterson's excavating business and Greg Butler's landscaping business are the worst possible fit for our village proper. They, the, the employees, the equipment, the noise, the traffic load should not be happening in your village, in the center of your village, but they have to, because that's where they were prior to this and they can't move. Um, the land that's down on, that's available in the C1 district, which is very limited, is very expensive, and it's not, it, it's not going to work. So there's, there's more affordable lands and lands that actually could work into your mix. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, I'd like to make a comment about that. Um, that well, not about what Chris said, but that, I mean, that is, that is how I remember that process. As I said, I was new to uh, the board and just trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> so, and, and it didn't, a lot of it didn't make, you know, I probably would have chose to have things one place or the other, but I was kind of going along and trying to figure out why, you know, the process. Um, I think it would be great for, to look at this again, um, right now, I think it is not a good time. Uh, we have several ongoing projects to, especially the town plan, which needs to get completed. This, it, it, so I think if we were to get into that, this piece of it, that would waylay the town plan long, for a longer amount of time, which we don't wanna do. We really need to get that wrapped up then I believe, then we could come back to this. And um, I, I would like to work on that because I think there are some things that we could possibly change that would just make more sense. Um, we, we don't have, you know, we could get the subdivision piece of it, the overall document um, through the adoption process with some of these, I mean, not that we couldn't make some changes, but to get into a full-fledged discussion and really look at all of these uses is gonna take a while. And we just, I don't think that we can get in right now and not, you know, we gotta get the plan done. We gotta get the energy plan. We have things that need to get through the, you know, the, 
the process that had been on the table for a long time. Um, so that's saying, I agree that we could look at it, but I would like to take it as a separate project after these things are done. Yeah, and, um, and that's my opinion. I, I agree with you, Katie. It's this is this is a big beast. Um, I don't think it's something you could have you could hash out tonight or even in a couple weeks. Um, so there's a hand, like I said, there's a few changes that I threw out there that have been major sticking points as far as zoning goes over the last few years since we did this that I would love to see addressed. They're very, um, a lot of the, the things that I saw in Kevin's comments are things that I think um, are in the bigger picture that you're talking about. The only other one that it, I noticed a lot of Kevin's notes, and I mentioned a little bit, um, is looking at the densities in the zones. Um, it really increasing the density in a lot of the zones. And I think that's something you you might be able to as a group do. Um, but when, when we get down to that a little bit later, we can discuss it as a bigger picture. Like I said, the only real use change I see, I think on this is just this one for my document. Kevin? I, I would argue that um, it, it, it needs to be done. Now, now, whether we take the time now and dedicate it to it or work it through with the with the town plan, but the town plan is forward looking and there's a lot of things that we're changing in that plan. And just to come back, come back out of the town plan and have a static set of zoning regs because that's what we did 20 years ago just doesn't make sense. Uh, I agree with you, but we have we have only so many people and so many hours in the day, and we need if we get that plan set, then we and we can even do it concurrently if if we want to get a uh, you know a, a subcommittee to work on it and report in, we, that can happen. But we need to keep moving on the town plan and get that and the inter, with the enhanced energy plan, get that through the town. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, but I think we've got the opportunity to, to really make this unified document reflect what the town plan is you know, projecting. And I agree, because I, I also agree very much with the density piece and you know, we started with let's look at subdivision and all this other stuff has come up and it's become a bigger project. So we just can't get, we have to figure out how to do it both. So, I mean, if we can figure out as a group how to keep them both moving, um, it may mean uh, putting the subdivision, the, this, this piece on hold. Right. A little bit, but so, I, I, I'm not quite sure how we do that. I mean, no, I mean we we've now have two really big projects in the works, and uh, you know we we've got to get the plan done. The plan does theoretically come first, and then right. this should reflect, enable. You know, this basically implements the plan. So I agree with you. How do we do it? So I I mean one recommendation would be um make some if there's some major substantive changes that are black better terms easy to do that really reflect that don't impact the vision of what the current plan or even what the updated plan are um maybe move forward with those set a hard time frame where you want to move to the next level um that you want to have these voted on by town meeting of next year. Um, so you can get your town plan done. As soon as that's done, you all move right into zoning regs. It would give you like four months to then jive your zoning regs against your town plan and have at it. I think that's a doable time. Um, and because the heavy lifting's done. I think now it's really going through your uses. Um, but that's my two cents on it. I'd hate to see the subdivision regulations go past the election season this fall. Me too. Uh, I, I think a lot of work's been done on the subdivision regs. And again, if we can make a few minor tweaks here to correct some oversights, that's great. If you feel that we shouldn't do any changes other than just the subdivision regs, I'm fine with that. I would love to see these few changes I've, I've asked for in there or part of them. Um, and possibly addressing the density. Other than that, you all should come back and, and, and address the uses 
based on your plan that you pass. When is the, um, so is it, we're, when would we be able to vote on, would it be election day now? I, I'm not gonna make the uh, Yeah. Uh, I, date. These dates are all over the place now because of all this COVID crap. Right, and, and there's an extension on the whole municipal planning grant, so that doesn't matter. Right, so I, I mean, honestly, if there's any way, if you guys could butt, but the problem is I don't think you're buttoning up the town plan between now and I think it's gotta be by mid next month. So, I mean, you've got about three weeks and I don't think that's doable. To make, to make the November date? Yeah, November, you could make without a, without a problem. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so you wouldn't make the primary, which is still up in the air anyways. Right. Except for the November, if you set your goal, have your the subdivision regs, the minor zoning changes, the floodplain changes that are in this document as well that we had to add, and the town plan and enhanced energy plan, all ready for November, that's very doable. After November, set a goal to have zoning changes ready to go for town meeting day the following six months later. Kevin, you want it sooner though. You would like to- I, I Strate strategically, I understand. I understand what Chris is saying. I think, I think the priority is it's not a priority for me, but the the energy plan, <laughs> but the town plan, and the subdivision regulations are a priority. I think, and if we can sneak in the, the few modifications, look at density, and start tweaking some of this stuff, see what the appetite is, and then we go into a detailed, detailed look at Article Two after November and have it ready for town meeting is, is probably the best best alternative that we've got. I mean, it, it's possible to kind of work if, if we have um, planning commission members working on the zoning and looking at, you know, make, coming into our meeting and saying, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the town plan, we'll keep moving on the town plan, but we'll also have on the agenda we can pick away at this as well and we might be able to do it concurrently it's possible so if that's we need we just need to uh be organized um so i uh, now anybody else have anything to say on this matter no <laughs> well i let me just add that I think the focus on one issue at a time is probably a good idea and just go through each one and press on. Okay. Okay, well let's let's see. Let's go through your list, Chris. Yeah. Let's so, go through with that. Okay. So, so noodle over those those two minor those two, at, at a minimum, um, the contractor or business yard change to throw them into VB and uh, the village business and I mean the village mix and RA five. That's something I would love to see. Um, the next one, um, we we limited accessory buildings in in most districts to a thousand square feet um, because we all thought it was going to be garages. I've had two people that have talked to me about wanting to put up horse barns um, and one person about a greenhouse. Neither one will qualify for an ag exemption, um, but so they both scaled back their projects and pulled it off. And their solution is they're probably just gonna build a second building right next to it, which is terrible planning. Um, so coming, trying to fix that number on accessory buildings um, it, out, would be a great thing. Um, what, what kind of increase are we talking about? What do they need in square footage? The horse barn, the horse barn was the biggest one that came to me and they were, they really were hoping to get double that because they wanted to do um, horse store. They want to be able to have three to four stalls, some hay storage, um, an area to groom. And it, it, a thousand square feet just wasn't big enough. 
and they weren't willing to jump through the, the to go through the hoops to become ag certified for horses. Um, it, it's not just like, oh, I have four horses, I qualify for ag. You also have, there's a handful of other things to, to be qualified for ag exemptions from the state you have to do. And they're like, it's a hobby. I just want to have some horses. Um, so their, their solution was they'll build the barn to store the horses in and a second structure right next to it to store horse, uh, to st store hay and, um, and have a, a grooming slash prep and tack area. What part of Bristol is this? Uh, it was up in the notch. So is it an RA one, two, what? Five. Oh God. Oops. That's got to be changed because that yeah. just uh, that just pushes something that is has no sense. So they needed like two thousand square feet. Yeah, I, I think it was like eighteen hundred square feet is what they wanted. What's a reasonable size? Um, can I get a clarification first? I thought that the what we decided last time it was a thousand square feet or thirty percent of the main building. That's accessory dwelling. This is just accessory dwelling. Got it. Yes. This okay. is not a dwelling. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Where I, is I, this? Where is this defined then in this? It, so, like for RA five, it's defined on page twenty five. Want me to go there? No, sure. I can't. I, I have it. I'll pull it up. Yeah, but, go there. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just about every zone we do it in, every zone, it's a thousand square feet. So in the village, it might make sense to limit a garage to a thousand square feet because we don't want a, a five bay garage. But out in the, when you get a little more remote, uh, like RA2, RA5, I could see bumping those up to possibly even just doubling that number would probably suffice and make it more realistic to what people are looking at. I think that's reasonable. Right there. It's on the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is, got it. So that would be my, probably my, uh, out of the zones, probably the RA5 and RA2, RA2 and RA5, if we could bump that up to 2,000 square feet, that would be for the accessory buildings. That would be, that would probably solve a lot of the issues. Again, this is, these are people that own large parcels out in the remote area. They would love to have some horses or some cows um, and need the barn space and don't qualify for ag. Well, I think this is very sensible. Can we vote on it? Um, I, I think, why don't we, well, why don't we just go do a straw poll? Because we don't. So, is anyone opposed? Just go through and tell you know, say how you feel about it. Can actually, we should go back to the first one because I don't know if we did that. And on the first one, I had a question. Are you suggesting that um, we allow it in RA one, two, and five, the business yard, or what were you? You don't say in your notes. No, as I looked at it closer, I really, I look at it, honestly, if you did village mix in RA5 for the business yards, that would solve a lot of the issues um, and push it. Th those are large expanses of, of area. It's com it seems moderately compatible with other uses and it pulls those out of our village centers or even out of the higher density spots. You don't want these kind of things in high density. Right. Like I said, RA5 and VM would be the village mix would be the two I would recommend adding those two to the uh, as conditional uses for at a minimum business yard. Why wouldn't you put RA2 in there? It RA2 is right on the cusp, Kevin. Um, two acres is it, it's pushing it as far as it, how big the project is. Um, but we do cover maximum lot coverage at 15% out in RA2. So that might solve some of that. But as we all know, I, I don't want these, you build the building, that's one thing. Next thing you know, you got 
a whole pile of equipment sitting out in the yard as well. And it may not be as compatible in RA2 um, as we'd want. But I can go either way on RA2. Do you see village mix possibly as being a problem because you have smaller, you have a greater density. Right. And, and you have adjoining, you have adjacent residential. I, I'm more actually more concerned about that. Right. I, and, and I think that's why it needs to be um, a conditional use. Okay. And the number one question on conditional use, is it compatible with the neighborhood? Right. I don't think Crystal Works would be the right place to have Masterson move his excavating company. But down on Hewitt Road on some of that, maybe. Right, right. Okay. So it's conditional use. So that makes a big difference. It's huge. Well, it, it also starts the banter between neighbors and the appellant, appellant too, which is unhealthy. Can you say that again? I said when you start looking at having control, conditional use control it, then all of a sudden you're buying neighbors and appellants. And that's not healthy. It'd be a lot clearer if it was okay. We do it or we don't do it. You know, right? The the, the downside of that, the problem with that, Kevin, and my only issue with that is the village mix. There's parts of it that, like I said, there's a big chunk of Hewitt Road that it could make sense to do it down there, but over at Bristol Works, it may not be as logical. Right across the street on the um, Jackman property, it probably makes sense. There is no neighbor there. So it, it, neighbors are going to, if it doesn't fit in a neighborhood, I, I think you've got to give the neighbors a chance to voice their concern. And again, it's up to the DRB or ZBA, whoever's going to hear the hearing, to determine whether or not their argument is valid. That's one of the big ones. Just because I come forward and say, I don't want to see an excavator on um, Munsell Avenue doesn't mean it can't go there. You, you, I, gotta, I gotta make it compelling um, and that it's not viable with the neighborhood, which it may be. I just wanna say something about conditional use. I think it's actually a pretty, it's a, a pretty good process. It's not always neighbors against neighbors. I mean, it doesn't have to be that way at all. I mean, it really, you ask that question, does this use fit? And it might not even get, you know, to the point where people are upset about things. It's just like, that's not going to work in this area. And then, and then, but then there's also ways to make it fit better by you kind of, you have the same tools that you do in site plan where you can um, ask someone to put a head, you know, you can have them have put a hedge up or a fence or whatever, but in some, in a, in an area like village mix you don't know where that's going to come up so you don't want to prohibit it but you want to be able to permit it if it's appropriate and you can't really know that ahead of time yeah i'm in agreement with that i think it should be conditional use because that gives us a chance to take a look at what's actually going to happen and it also gives us a chance to make a decision if in fact this is something that is okay for this area, for a specific area. And, and to be honest with you, Kevin, if after six months or a year, it turns out that this turns into like a, for lack of better terms, a political pissing match all the time, you all fix it. That's, that gives, that's the beauty of being the planning commission. I, I feel that this is a chance to fix an oversight earlier, correct cautiously, and if the caution is way too cautious, fix it again in a, in a year or two. Um, I, you're not locked into this for for indefinite periods of time. That's the only good. That's the only thing I can say on that. Well, can we agree that it needs to be changed and and it can get tweaked later when we are <coughs> finalizing the use charts or the use matrix, whatever you call that thing. It, can we agree as a group to move on? Yeah. I, I, again, I, I don't think that's an, I don't think it's earth shattering if you all add this change. It'd be nice if you could. I, like I said, I got 
two contractors that would love to move their stuff elsewhere. Um, but if it's, if it's next year, it's next year. I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Well, I'll make a motion to um, change VM and RA5 per Chris's recommendations. I second that motion. Okay. Um, I didn't think we were going to do official voting on this, but I guess we, it was going to be there. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Rob? No. And I get you don't have to tell me why, but would you like to tell us why? Well, I think we just need more conversation. If it, we're going to do those two, especially the village mix, isn't there more, more conversation, whether in the same time, possibly the RA2 or the village residential, there's appropriate areas where it could be. Oh, I lost you. Well, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go. I do not actually, I, you said we're there, but I do think that we need to not vote on these right now because that wasn't the plan. It was, we're going to vote on the whole document, but we're not there yet. Well, uh, just to be an asterisk, you know, that we need, this one needs more conversation. Right. But, um, but you have a motion on the, on the floor. Then a motion in a second. You've had a vote. Uh, started a vote. You can't just pull it back per Robert's rules. You, you that's just procedural. All right. All right. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if I can undo it. But my intent was, we are getting really fuzzy on what we're talking about, and we should understand what we're talking about and move on. Right. So. If you want to rescind this and make it just a potential recommendation, finish your vote. It's what five two five one whatever it is. Ha make a second motion to rescind the previous motion. I know it sounds trivial, but that's procedurally correct. I'll make the motion to rescind. Any? We need a second. 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 Rob seconds. I didn't ask you to take minutes, Bill, but I assume you are. I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> as I can. Okay. Um, but I, I guess my concern is that we get clear let's somehow let's on what we're agreeing to. Let's finish what we're doing. Um, so you made a motion to rescind. We second it. All in favor of rescinding? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Okay. That is done. Yes. Now, you have a discussion about that, Kevin. I just am concerned that we get crisp about this and understand what we're agreeing to and not agreeing to. Right, we need more discussion about it. Um, let, well, we sort of jumped into this big topic tonight without a lot, uh, I, well, I don't know. I, th I don't think there was a lot of uh, prep, you know, anticipation on this. I mean, I wasn't thinking that we were going to be picking away at the use chart tonight. I thought we were going to be kind of airing some, but it is a big, but there's concerns and it's important that when we jumped, when we started this project, it was about subdivision regs, but then it became a, a unified document. So now we're looking at the whole, all of the zoning regs. That's a, a bigger project. You're shaking your head, but we made a choice to do that. And so it, we had this little um, sort of hiatus from the plan so that we could get the subdivisions done. Now we, we need to get back to the plan. I, they're both very, very important. I don't want to not give either one of them the time that they need. So it's kind of a priority thing. I'm not saying let's rush through this and not do it correctly. Um, I mean, I, I, let's like hear from the group. I, I'm not gonna make the decision of how we sh should proceed, but we do need to have a bigger discussion on 
because it's going to go back and forth. And it, that's why, as Chris said, this is a this is not a quick thing to go through. Um, so I, I I'm a little confused at how to move forward right now. So if anyone wants to, well, I mean, if if the, the thing that we're dwelling on here is the uses, and as Kevin has brought up, he says he saw he has seen some inconsistencies in the uses. All right. So my thinking is. This is all very detailed work. It takes a lot of time uh, to talk it out. I think there should be a subcommittee of two or three people that communicate uh, and get their thoughts together, draw up a use table, and then present it to the, uh, the rest of the folks in the commission. This is very detailed work. Right. I would actually like if we meet, if this first item on Chris's list is if we can't come to any, a general straw poll agreement on it, let's, let's highlight that. That will be, you know, put, you know, to return to later. Let's go through, see what, if we can make any headway on these other ones, just get them out of the way. We'll go back to the ones that are more difficult so that we can make some progress. Okay. Um, and, but we're not gonna skip over anything or not make a decision on something that is not clear. Um, is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's, and, and I would prefer not to vote on these right now and just, if we're not in agreement and it's and people are confused about the issue and we need more information, we'll come back to it. So let's just have if we agree on on one of these recommendations, we'll we'll say we're good with that, and and we'll come back to the ones that we're we're not clear on. So uh, let's keep moving. So we we are good with the second one. I assume that we agreed to that. Well, let's again, that was the idea of doubling from 1,000 to 2,000 square feet. Okay. Okay. All right, now we're gonna to move to the third one, Chris. You're back on. So home business not allowed in HDR. Yeah, and honestly, if you're gonna look at the whole use table, I would table that till we get to that. Okay. Um, the next one is certificate of occupancy. It's sort of a nebulous thing. Uh, statute says we have to, I have to provide a certificate of occupancy. Um, but that's all it says, and that's all our regs say. It doesn't clarify what it is. Um, one thing that Moncton does that I like, in order to get a certificate of occupancy, there's four um, criteria that have to be met. I'm not a building inspector, nor is, uh, or is any zoning administrator ever gonna be. But the, they have, has to have a um, running water, a cook surface, heating system, and I want to say a flushing toilet. Those things they have deemed are considered what would make a house livable. I, so it's things that anyone can walk in and look at. I can flush a toilet and know that it works. Um, if, you're, if you guys are fine with that, I will write up, I will forward you the language that we use in Moncton that we might want to add just to the home occupancy piece. It's super easy, but it gives some clarity to Right now, somebody calls me for a home occupancy. I go up and say, yep, you built what you said you were going to build. Check. And I hand them a CO. It's weak. That's how it is in many towns. I'm not saying that's right. Oh, I know. But it uh, is. Um, permits as well, as far as making sure they have all their permits in order and proof. Not necessarily. Um, Yeah, it, it's it, basically is the house. It's more about an exterior than interior. It's not a building inspection. It's is the house located where it is permit where it was permitted. Um, that's pretty much what it was in New Haven. You know. Yeah. So, so yeah. Chris, Chris, right now when you give out a you give out a certificate of occupancy, right? So you're just really looking. Is it 
Is it there? Is it what they said? And you don't go in and do the other stuff. Well, I think that's really important. And, and but like to, Rob's, to Rob's point, if, if our regulations are driving um, permits beyond the zoning permit, we should be checking those as well? Right, and, and that is, I wanna say that, again, the, but I said they had to have a flushing toilet. I think they actually, they have, yeah, it states that they have to have a state wastewater permit as well. And, and, and it, that has to be inspected. But yes. so that, that is beyond our purview. So, so that's not, you know, that's no, it might in the be permit, that's in the permit that says that you can't give someone a certificate of occupancy without that, that box being checked. I'm sorry, Rob. I'll get no, to you. And that's what I wanted to make sure that that certificate of occupancy was verifying that permits were in order, just that they had them, not a check of them or anything, just to, that. Wastewater permit, a, any kind of exterior permit, not doing a interior inspection of wiring and not that. Right. That's not included. It's it's basically the wastewater or any uh, kind of other agreements or um, right of ways, things like that are that are go that go back and check into the previous deeds, things that were carried forward from previous owners or so, coming in so around the land. So the two the only two that we check right now is do you have a wastewater permit and do you have a, a curb cut? That's all it is. John, would you like to speak? John Moyers. Oh, you're muted. No. I unread myself. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Uh, just, uh, just to flag something, you don't actually have to discuss it here, but hopefully you would discuss it when it's appropriate in the future. But as a landlord, somebody who's purchased two downtown properties in the last couple of few years and renovated them, you know, when I bought the 22 Main and 11 Main Street in 2018, I found the residences there. And really the whole buildings, but definitely the residences were what raised my my eyebrows uh, in utterly deplorable and frankly dangerous conditions. I mean, dangerous to the point of not just to the occupants, but to, in the case of these downtown buildings that share walls, to adjacent property owners in terms of fire risk and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know places that were literally not unheated, they had a heating unit in them, but unless you were gonna spend a, maybe a thousand dollars or more a month in, for propane, I doubt you could keep it at 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, knob, and tube, knob and tube wiring, like exposed and, and with junk piled on top of it, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of metal and other kinds of mattresses and junk piled on top of active hot, knob and tube wiring stuff like that uh almost unfunctional kitchens no real uh plumbing that worked every time somebody takes a shower for example it rains down on the people below things like that i hope bristol would consider um the state does cfos like i renovate a building i can't occupy it until i get the state cfo and they're checking that i lived up to my um all the permits that i pulled for doing electrical and plumbing and all that stuff all the life safety stuff you know and uh um so you know bristol could have a c of o system that also has some means some mechanism that allows for a review of buildings that in extent for their current condition uh, in some cases at least downtown where buildings are so close to each other uh, that could be a serviceable thing. And without some mechanism by, by which, say, even tenants themselves in their apartment could say, hey, my landlord is not providing adequate heat, or I don't have plumbing that works half the winter, or every time I take a shower, it rains down on the floor below me. None of those are humane conditions that should exist, and yet there's no system in the town to, to even begin addressing those, much less have any sort of resolution. So I hope that when you think about CFOs, that you also include some thought about a mechanism by which at least somebody could raise concerns and bring 
some official um, attention to uh, conditions that are, you know, unsafe for occupants and unsafe for neighbors. I'll leave it at that. It's Thank a big problem. Thank you. That is a big problem. And I've come across that in a lot of the housing work that I'm doing with Addison County, that it's a hard thing because um, they're rental properties and they're substandard and it, it's a bigger problem. And it, it is not necessarily tied to this sea of, oh, it's, you know, it, it's another system. Um, but it, it, it is, except that in our, in the very preface of our town plan as it's written today it says something i don't have it here and i haven't read it for a while be the next one too because right. but what it says that. is to ensure adequate safe and efficient housing for residents that if that's not a mission nothing is if that's not clear nothing is i agree i totally agree with you and that's something it is a problem in every community unfortunately and it's yeah but that's a good point thank you Okay, where were we? So, yeah, so. All right, so it needs, it's not clear. Um, the certificate of occupancy, not clear. Do we need a better definition? Like I said, I can send one out. Um, I'll pull it together this week and email it out to you guys. Um, just to look at, it's really creating four basic physical rudimentary checks that anybody could do make sure that the house is actually inhabitable at the point of um, um, the issuance of that certificate. So I guess we just need to see what that looks like. So uh, yeah. uh, if that's something that you want to get examples for or um, to make that clear, or, and also maybe, oh, where'd you go? Or for example from another community. Okay, let's move to the, I'm going to try to move things along. Absolutely. Um, let's go to the next one. Thanks. What was it? Um, plan review. Oh, Sorry. this may be a bigger beast. This is one we've run into. Um, you guys have had a few issues with it where you're doing a site plan review for a change of use on Main Street. Oh, yeah. Building. I don't know how to address that one. I don't have a good answer. Yes, I know it's a problem. I was thinking about that. So uh, just to let people know what we're talking about, and that I don't know if we've had one of these, we might have had one of these um, uh, applications maybe last summer where someone came in and I'll just use the example of uh, the Harmonia hair salon. Um, exactly. What? I said exactly. That's right. Prior to what, were, what was in there before now? I can't think of it. Art store. Yeah, it was, a, it was a grooming establishment of some type. No, no. For what pets, was your right? No? It, was, it was the auto parts store. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. It, it recycled was, reading. It was recycled reading. Right. So recycled reading left and... No. The, oh, yes, you're right. Honey Lights is in auto parts. You're right. Right. Yes. So they had they they the way our our zoning is set up is that they had to have a site plan review for that, basically just a change of use and that it it's hard to that was kind of an oversight on our part I would say it really is a change of use I think it should be reviewed as a change of use and how do you do that because the use might not be appropriate so then then it does come to that question of a conditional use. And um, because we, yeah, we I'm need to change some of the uses to permitted. And then or we could change some of the uses to permitted. Yeah. I mean you're not going to catch everything that way. Right. And that, that, avoid that, use that, actually might, that use might that might have been permitted as far as I'm not even sure. So it does not make sense to have a site plan review because there is no site to, there's nothing that will be changed because it's all interior. Right. So. Um, 
Again. Well, I think these are all good. We should just go and discuss these. If we have concerns, we don't have to agree, disagree, and then they can be presented later when we look at everything. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, so this is really just for discussion to take down concerns about them. Um, so the next, the next one then, um, as we move on is, uh, and it really reflects some of Kevin's uh, comments where density might be a little low. Um, a great example is um, Susan Bowen, who owns um, the uh, Woodland Apartments, has gone through the Act 250 process to build two more buildings down there. The problem is the density we created there, she's going to build on two building lots, five total units. She has buildings that have four and five units in them that are a better use of the space. The, the number is way too low for multifamily. Or the number, I've had half a dozen people that have bought um, parcels um, out in half acre zoning. They want to know if they could turn them into duplexes. Can't do it because it, it's, it's half acre zoning, they only have a half acre. And it um, density is only one um, dwelling unit. So I'd really like to look at the densities um, in all the zones. That I think might be a bigger conversation elsewhere. I don't know. It's just my that's the big concern I've got on on the densities. This is where. Um, and this probably ties into what some of your concerns, Kevin, and definitely some of my um, issues that I would like to try to address with this is maybe thinking about getting away from um, density being um, defined as a unit and look at it as square footage. So in that case, you can get a greater density in some cases. So if you had and so if you had one unit that's small, you could have, well, it's a bigger conversation and I don't have my notes ready, for, but. Chris, can you, can you give that example again so we, we can understand what the problem was? Sure. Or, or is. Absolutely, so Susan Bowen, who they own um, um, Woodland Apartments down on Lover's Lane, this yep. apartment uh, complex down there. She um, applied for, um, a site plan to build two new buildings. Um, he's gone through the Act 250 process, but while she was in front of the um, um, zoning board, it was discovered that the density um, is way lower than what she was hoping for. She wanted to build two four unit buildings, I think it was. And the density is on, she's in Village Mix, is, give me two seconds. Um, Two units per acre. Ah, okay. So it's it's one acre that she. I was like, she's got like two and a half acres. She's trying to build these two apartment buildings on that match everything else that's in that complex. It's a great use of that space, but she had to scale it back. And now isn't sure she can build it because to only do five units is not very cost effective, and it yeah. doesn't have a housing problem. There wasn't a site plan review because she wouldn't have gone to the zoning board. It's a conditional use. Okay. So why is it conditional use? Uh, because multifamily is conditional use in the village mix. Right, but is, isn't it part of the existing? No, um, so it's- Apartments? No, it, it was where the old water system used to be in there on the property. Okay, so it's not part of the same. I mean, it, it's on the same road. But it's not part. It, it's a separate standalone parcel. Okay. So, but if anyone wanted to build that down there, they would have been limited to very a very few units on very where it should be tight density. So, when it comes to multifamily, we treat multifamily as though it needs the same amount of of, of, of acreage as a single family home, and it it's a different beast. It's a different concept. Um, yes, still keep a conditional or even site plan so you make sure you have adequate parking and meet other criteria. I'm good with that. But bumping up multifamily and or duplex 
on all the zones actually makes sense? Well, that is that bigger conversation. So about density. Oh, it's, it, exactly. It's part of that huge density discussion. But that, that's the issue. OK, next is easier. Um, it, it is to a degree. Can I say something about density? Yes. Since this, this is for your larger discussion down the road, not necessarily for a response now. But okay. if you're going to have a larger discussion, I'm all for density. Like, I believe in density. I live in the village. I'm an environmentalist. And we're all asking people for a variety of reasons to live in denser communities. And that's where the world is going. So density is an attribute, I think. If we're going to have density, though, we also have to empower citizens to confront issues as neighbors that may arise from that density. So light pollution and noise pollution. We have, we have lighting regulations that are actually pretty good, but they're completely unenforced. We have no noise ordinance. The standard for the noise ordinance that we have is whether something is a nuisance, which, and there's no authority to go to, to who decides it's a nuisance or not. One man's nuisance is another man's air conditioning. And uh, so that's not very empowering for neighbors and citizens. And, you know, to the extent that you can improve density, that's great. But then please give us the tools to make that density livable and tolerable so that we don't, so that our waste noise doesn't impact our neighbors. And if it does, there's a neighborly way of doing it that doesn't require, as it does now, litigation to deal with that. If a neighbor is not, you know, we, we need a system by which we can, we can have the high density and have a way of engaging at the, at the town level um, the problems that arise from density, noise and light being two principal ones. So I hope that's part of your discussion about empowering by having, creating a mechanism for those complaints to be dealt with through the town so they don't have to go into the state system. Thank you. Okay, thanks, John. Okay. Anything else on density at the moment? Yep, let's move on. All right, so the last one is, is one that um, has popped up recently. Uh, so as we know, our, our trail network that's be being um, created throughout our community is great. Um, I think any opportunity we have to provide some outdoor recreation is, is beautiful. We made some minor snafus back when we created the, the zoning. Um, the big one was we included trails in outdoor recreation. Um, oh, I lost Katie. I was hoping, Katie, if you get a chance. Yep. Now just to the next page for me. Yep. Perfect, right there. Uh, up, actually come up just a tiny bit so we can see the header. There we go. So if you look across, outdoor recreation is not allowed in our, um, in all of the town. Um, the high density residential, which is the most of the village, village mix, um, and village business, which is our downtown, um, and the Bristol Pond district, which is out behind Bristol Pond. That's all. Outdoor recreation is it, the when we talked about it way back when was oh we didn't want it didn't make sense to burn up large volumes of open land in those sp spaces. What we ran into is hiking trails are listed as part of outdoor recreation, i.e. Three quarters of the Bristol Trail Network right now is not compliant. And we, you, you need to fix that. So if you go to the definitions at the very end of, and I'll give you a page number here in a sec, Katie. Yep. Uh, go uh, 92. Whoa. Oh, 91. Getting there. Uh, yep, yeah, you're almost there. Keep going down. No, you gotta go further south. 91. 
Oh, I was. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, uh, that's on the old document. It's probably around 98, 99 now with all the added stuff. Sorry, my bad. These are alphabetical and now in your definition. So you want to get to record? All right, all right, all right. What are we looking for? Recreation. Oh, or receives. All right, we got a ways to go. Yeah, you got about six, eight more pages here. Here we go. We're almost there. A little further. There it is. Okay, right there. So, recreation outdoor. Um, the examples, athletic fields, sports courts, tracks, trails. That's the problem. So, you either need to remove trails, but the definition still leaves it sort of nebulous. You would be better off to add site plan to all of those locations or conditional use to all places it within the town to allow outdoor recreation. The site plan would ensure that there's adequate parking. The one issue with anything of, of like a trail is, is there enough parking at the trailhead? That needs to be determined. I'm fine with site plan. Conditional use is, doesn't make sense to put a soccer field on, in the middle of a neighborhood, maybe not. So that's my two cents. It's just one that needs to be fixed or the, the, the trail network that, that, is work, that a lot of people in this town have worked very hard on may come to a screeching halt. So a couple comments is one is if you remove trails from the definition it's not defined therefore it's also prohibited. That's what I was going to suggest. Why can't we and, just take trails out of the definition? And then the other thing is is there's a lot of parks and there's a lot of um, um conservation land that's open for recreation and i don't know exactly how those things fit in either right and and that's where i i think it would make more sense add recreation to as either a site plan or conditional use to all the zones that is not currently listed it, it, can i go back to the use chart it is. I'm sorry to throw that on there, but this is one of those that I'm being pressured a little bit from. Let me go back. Is everyone okay if I go back to the use chart? If I go back to the use chart, do you need to see the definition? Okay. I just want to see where we have it allowed, not allowed. Only allowed in one place. No, oh, I. So it's yeah. buy right use anywheres. So in your village business, which is your downtown, your village mix, your uh, high density residential and the Bristol Pond district, it's not allowed. So I would recommend again, either, it either has to be conditional or site planned on all the, I, you could site plan all those and it'd be fine. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do we want to discuss this at a later date? Um, I, I think that's kind of a no brainer, um, but that's my opinion on that. But I mean, we still, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna accept, we're gonna talk about it all again, you know, but if just, if we have a general sense, if people have a problem with this or not, or if they're in favor of, of making this change that Chris has suggested without, you know, a whole, any other conversation, we can certainly change your mind about that, but just for our notes now. So we're doing, Chris's suggestion is site plan across the whole thing. Um, not site plan, isn't there some conditional? Yeah, I would leave the well, conditional. There's, four, there's five conditionals. Do so you want site plan across the whole thing, or no. do you want to leave those five conditionals? Leave, leave your conditionals conditional, add site plan as the current prohibited. So okay. The spaces should so be in, in Bristol Pond, HDR, Village Mix and Village, village, business. And village business. Okay. So is everybody sort of in a general agreement with that? Yes. yes. Okay. General agreement. <clears throat> Okay, Chris. That's all the big changes, changes I have. 
Um, the only other one, and, it, and this is while you're looking at your, your table, and this is a philosophical discussion to have yet again. Um, one thing that Bristol states in their zoning, right in section 300, which is the application of regulations, says any use not permitted by these regulations shall be deemed prohibited. Um, it, it creates a bit of a narrow-minded zoning. Um, you, if something is not on this table with a letter in it, it is not allowed in your town. So other communities, especially what they've done is, um, and I can send out verbiage, Moncton's got great verbiage on it, as far as their conditional use, um, if you can show that it is a similar use that is, that is allowed or conditional, then it can go to the board for them to approve. Um, a great example was um, in Moncton, they had a location where veterinary clinic was allowed, but a, a grooming business wouldn't have been. And when you think about it, they're the same impact. They allowed the groomer to go to the board, make their argument that it's the exact same impact as a vet office, dogs barking, traffic, the whole nine yards, and they allowed that use. So that's something I, I would like to see you ponder for, not tonight, but just keep out in, in your mind that it would allow you to look at uses that aren't on this table that somebody may come to, come to the um, boards with an idea that it's terrible to have to say no because it just ain't listed because we didn't think of it. So, so um, getting around that, you're saying if we have a statement, like a disclaimer saying, if there's a use listed because people have the, an applicant has the opportunity to come and make an argument that it's similar to another use. Yes. So I, I you it so it's basically apply, just text. Right. And so it's not, basically you eliminate that, that line where if it's not permitted, it's prohibited. That if it's not for if it's not permitted, it can be reviewed as a conditional use. Where is that? Uh, section three. It's on page thirty-two of my existing document. It's section three hundred. So go down about. Right. I, I don't need to find it, but I was going to say uh, that it it would be good if you could. Absolutely. The comments that we talked about tonight and any other thing like that, if you could mark up. It Absolutely. Your, and um initials so that that would be or anything else yeah no and that's probably the, that's all i've got for this like i said those are the that's just one that it's i i ran into it again recently in moncton i'm like oh it would be nice if we had it in bristol if it's if it's on the use table and, and already prohibited leave it as prohibited but if it's not on this table it gives the an applicant the ability who's creative to come in and say you know what my again, my dog grooming business is just is noted than a veterinary clinic as far as impact. Why can't I have it where you can have a vet clinic? That's just happens to be the example I have today. So it would be something to think about. Okay. All right. And that's all I got. So we need to figure out where we steer this ship next. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, let's see, because we need to get back to the plan. And so maybe we should talk a little bit about schedule. That wasn't really Unless someone else has something else they you know want to contribute to you know just in terms of thinking about moving forward, I mean we have more conversation that has to happen here. Um, let me ask you. Let me ask a question here. It sounds like we're in three different directions here all of a sudden, and I think I'm trying to focus on what the primary issue is, and it sounds like the plan itself is the big thing to begin with, right? The plan. Well, we've already, I mean, we need to, we need to continue meeting and, you know, reviewing that. Now, I don't, that's. What do you see as the biggest issue? We need to get the plan completed. Okay, let's focus on that. Plan and, the, yeah, and the energy, and the energy, enhanced energy plan to the select board and then to warn it um, and, and 
eventually get it voted on. So, but that's a process that has to go through. Say, so let's aim toward that then. Okay. Then does the sub, do the subdivision regs then uh, get tabled until we get that completed? Or do we try to have a, um, a subcommittee look at some of this stuff, discuss some of these issues and bring it back to the... But Katie, what, isn't the subdivision pretty much in the bag? I mean, that was rewritten over and over again. But what was done was, it's not a separate document. It was combined with our existing zoning regs, which we're looking at tonight, to be the unified development review uh, regulations. So if we're gonna make ch these changes or these, all these other things that we have discussed tonight and haven't been able to come to co a conclusion on or any, and other things that we haven't discussed, it is now all one document. And so that was sort of my frustration earlier, that we have a whole other very important project now, a very important thing we need to deal with. Um, if we had kept the two documents separate, it wouldn't have been an issue, but we all agreed to have it as one document, which I do think is a better end result. We just, um, we just have the opportunity to make these other changes or or we could bring it through try to get it you know try to get it through the process get it adopted and then come back to it so all of a sudden you know not all of a sudden but right now i see that we have these two big projects that are midstream do you follow me um i'm a little mixed up but i got a piece of it <laughs> Am I that unclear? I apologize. Um, we know where we are with the plan, right? Uh, yes. So when we asked Adam to do, when Adam did the subdivision regs, subdivision regs can stand separately. They can stand on their own, or you can combine them with your zoning regs, and then they become a unified development document, unified planning document. That is what we decided to do. Yes. So when that that needs to get re-adopted and then approved by the town, so to make that you know a, a working document, but but we have this opportunity now to make some other changes in the zoning piece of it, and that's what we were discussing tonight. So there's more there's more issues here that people want that it appears that people want to talk about i would like to talk about the density issue some of these you know use issues well just using the subdivision piece uh will we run the subdivision through the one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve areas of our of our town or is subdivision I'm sorry? What do you mean, the zoning areas? Yes. Well, it all just becomes one document. So the whole, it's part of the same document. Okay, but. Uh, the, when, you, when you go through a subdivision process, it's just a, a separate, it's a, a different process. I mean, we're, right now we're talking about uses, what's allowed where. Um, we're not talking about going through the subdivision process, which is, is a, one of the process, one of the processes that this document um, outlines. It's just one piece of this overall document. This, Jeff? So, so if I understand, and I'm, you know, I'm new to this, but the purpose here was to do the subdivision regs, not to review every use in the zoning documents. It wasn't necessarily. No. Yeah. And I can see just looking at it that every one of these uses would be a discussion. <laughs> Not everyone, but so it's like it, there's, it, some it, it, are, there are some that are so anomalous. You know, why is a veterinary clinic allowed in the high density residential area on a conditional use, but not in the village residential area in the commercial area? 
I'm sure there's a history there. And I'm sure there's a history on dozens of these, which right. probably seems to me is not a productive use right now if your purpose is to get subdivision regulations. Right. Maybe was, of course, we started down the road of making changes now, use changes. Uh, so it's a question of where you want to cut it off, I would say. Exactly. And so I'm trying to be um, diplomatic and, and hear everything. I have, is, I have things that I'm concerned about too. And, um, but we don't want to get bogged down right now in this, but we also don't want to miss an opportunity to make some changes that are affecting people like not being able to you know, have a greenhouse on their piece of property where they should be able to have a greenhouse because it's a farm, you know, farmland um, that I'm referring to the accessory dwelling. And so some of those things that really affect people, we have always talked about trying to change, fix those pieces when we had an opportunity. But yes, it's like with the plan update, we probably got into the weeds a little bit too much in terms of not just updating the statistics and this and that, but it's hard not, it's, you know, it's the mission creep thing where you just get too bogged down. And so that is why we have to make some decisions in terms of how, you know, where do you cut it off? Do you cut it off? Where where are we with the plan currently? Because it's been two and a half months since we last met and discussed it. The plan itself, we've been, right. you we're know, there was a gap, and we're, then we've been on this. Uh, they're pretty, pretty pretty much where. Which was we were, where we were going to have an open house on April seventh, and that got canceled. And then we, as a planning commission, shifted over to subdivision regs. Um, Andrews pretty much our emergency management person and he's been dealing with all of that at, at regional planning. So there really hasn't been um, a lot of work done on that. So that's pretty much been on hold. But do you recall what we have left to go yes. through and address um, in that? Uh, there, we need to go through the flood resiliency piece um i believe we had started to discuss the um land use section i can't remember if we I, I i can't i don't really know right off the top of my head but it definitely is getting close um but we need to you know get back there i mean i i, I could say you know why we could maybe let's see what is my my thoughts, my feelings are that the subdivision stuff's important and we've gotten through that, we've gotten that together and then we're down this road of a new zoning combined document and it does make sense to make updates and address the issues that there are in that zoning document before it's reissued. It doesn't make sense to do it and then do amendments to it or changes to it shortly thereafter. But the focus, I think, should be on the plan and getting that wrapped and shipped down the road and then get back on this as soon as we can because the plan was the major thing and that's what needs to get done first, I think. I would second that with uh, Rob. Let's, let's focus on the big issue and get that done. If, if we go back and look at the plan, we need to be concise. There was a lot of loose ends. There's a lot of divergent activity. We need to refocus and we need to get crisp and we need to finish it up. I still and I still feel uh, subdivision regulations are very important to go before the voters in November. And in order to do that, um, we need to get crisp and we need to get organized and understand what the gaps are on the plan and fill them and get done with it. So I'll just offer my two cents on it. Um, the subdivision regs are, um, are critical. This has been a, a, a directive for me from the select board from day one of having this position for two and a half years. We've been working at it for a while to get them done. Um, they, the, the subdivision aspect of it is done. Um, in my mind, to the point where you could send those to the select board. 
you want to hold off on all the uses and all the other modifications, I'm fine with that. I just thought there was a handful of them that um, if we had an opportunity, we could do them. The means table until later, I'm fine with that. But to, to delay the subdivision regs is absolutely a bad decision. I think you could have this document as it stands today to the select board and finish your town plan all in a timely manner. You could vote on both in November. I vote for you, Chris. That sounded like a um, <laughs> campaign speech. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. We got to do it, though. You know, and and it's not like we're not working. No, I, I think no, I we, agree. I think people have been doing great. We've been doing a great job. You know, considering uh, I learned how to share the screen tonight. Um, so <laughs> uh, I just we need to keep moving forward. I think we've made some you know good progress in the last three meetings. Um, and do we want, so the next meeting. I think we need an extra one. Well, we've been, uh, we'll be extra meeting. We've been doing two meetings a month. Do you mean a third? No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm calling the second one an extra. Okay. We ought to continue with that. Okay. So yeah, so the next meeting would be um, June 2nd, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, uh, no, yes. Oh yes, 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 yes. And I am going to have actually a conflict on June 16th. Um, so, but that's okay. Cause if we get, if we, how about we shoot for on uh, June 2nd, we regroup with the plan get some very specific things to discuss and review and well, we'll review the plan and, and, you know, kind of do an outline of where, what we have to complete and how we need to do it and, and move forward on that. I, I would suggest that we have a matrix for that plan that's out to everybody a week before the meeting. A matrix of what is done and what needs to be done. Yes. That sounds like a good idea. You actually have one of those. Um, so we can do that. So the, the other two pieces to think about um, is how um, you want to have some public meetings and or forums. Um, that is part of the requirements of any of these changes. Um, so try to be creative. There's ways to do it. I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but that's something to noodle through. Um, I would say by the next meeting, come with some ideas, um, at least. Um, that to be a discussion you have. And the second is, Katie, what is Andrew's availability going to be going forward as, as the, his emergency? No, he's, he's get, you know, he's got to get back on it. He's just, the, the thing is he gets interrupted. You know, it's like, there's a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of, but, you know, we're all kind of getting used to to what we're getting used to. Um, and he, know, he knows that it is there hanging over his head. Um, so, okay, matrix for in a week that would be. All right? Yes. yes. And in terms of, yeah, the public engagement part, in um, public participation in terms of feedback on the plan, like we were gonna have, you know, our open house. That obviously is difficult to do those sort of activities. Um, so we'll have to figure out something. But it seems like people are participating in, uh, in Zoom meetings actually more. I've, I've been to a couple of public meetings that um, community meetings that there were a lot of participants, which was interesting. Um, all right, so let's, for June, we'll, we'll get back on the plan. Okay, I appreciate your input. Anything else from anybody tonight? I just have a question. Where does that leave us then on the subdivision regs? Have we decided how we're moving forward on them or? Well, we're going to get back to the plan. We can't. 
the subdivision piece is done, as Chris said. We're basically tweaking the zoning piece. Right. We don't have a, a subdivision document, so to speak, that within this total unified document. It's, it, it's two separate things. Subdivisions are one aspect. The subdivisions and, create, and adding them to the, the existing zoning regs and renaming it was one. Modifying all the other pieces of it, that's part two. Part two, put off until uh, after you get done with the plan. If you have time before the plan, after the plan's done, and you may be able to tackle some of the low hanging fruit, do it. If not, wait till after it's done and, and you vote on it in November. The last time it was done, how many years did it take us? Three. Well, I know, but we've got a working foundation. Yeah, it's a much right. better document now. Yeah, I know, but it took a long time, and a lot of that was because there's a lot to discuss and a lot of different opinions on it. Um, and that's probably why way back it was like, okay, if it's like this, let's just leave it. So, but there are obvious things that I think everyone is seeing that could be um, improved on. Anything else? So does that answer your question? Well, it seems you have three options. You can just submit, you know, have a UDR which has the subdivision regs added, no other changes. That's option one. If I understand this, the other one is a UDR with the subdivision regulations and some other changes which, for instance, Chris has seen are pertinent issues that come up all the time, but not theoretical issues. So you don't go through every use, just uses which he has seen or other people have seen to be problematic. Or option three is to go through the entire use table um, and try to change the whole document. So it's just to, it, uh, unless I'm misunderstanding, those are the those are the three options, and we should probably just decide which one we want to do. It doesn't have to be today. Obviously, yeah. it can't be today. Well, I, I think it hit the nail on the head, Jeff. And and I would say that go down option one at the moment. If you have time after you're done with the plan to review option two, which is the handful of, of high high level changes that should happen, that's great. If you have time to get into it deeper, that's even better. But um, I okay. I really like how you broke that out. That that's a good that's a good description. And it is every member of the planning commission can look at that document and you know you know when we get back to it, come to the meeting with a list of I feel really strongly about this and this is why. But with that in mind, that we do want to get the subdivision regs passed and approved, and you know we gotta we gotta find that place. It's you know that we're getting the important stuff. Uh, addressed, but we're we're also getting the document um, adopted and passed. So, so that's the minimum. Excuse standard. me. That's the minimum standard to get it to get it done. The the plan as it is renamed and with the subdivision regulations put in, but no other changes. We'd like to at, at least do that. Right, but I'm saying that along the way, we you know, if everyone like comes with you know their suggestions that you know and and thought about it, so not you know, and so we will. I think we will have time to have those discussions if we're efficient about it. Well, the the other the other thing too is if we're going to go back to the plan, we need to get Chris on what that has to be done and get it done too, and then in a timely manner, and then we can think about what we've got for space after that to finish off the zoning regs. Yeah, well, yeah, I think we agreed to that. Okay. Anyone want to make a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second? Did someone second? Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you in two weeks. Two weeks.